nothing actually, there's nothing actually in here. I, I just wanted to kind of set the scene that it's been a tough week and we're gonna need a few of those. Let's do it. Yes guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Look, it has been a relatively slow week, no doubt about it guys. You might have guessed by the title, maybe even the thumbnail, I couldn't have put it any clearer. It has been slow, the sales have been low, off what was almost our best ever week the week before. So some very interesting things going on, certainly with my eBay store for the month of June that we will highlight a little bit later on. Um, as much as it has been a relatively tough week, there are still a few sales that have been made and a few stories to share with you guys and hopefully help you with your own reselling journey out there. Hey guys, thanks very much for clicking on this video as well. It is an absolute pleasure having you here. I do these videos every single Sunday and uh, I do have a lot of fun doing it, whether I'm bringing you some great information or some not so uh, great information like today. So let's dive into the first item. Fingers crossed you can still get something out of it today. Before we get going though, guys, let me know in the comments below, what was your best sold sales item of the week? Uh, always love to hear it, and uh, especially this week uh, with a couple of slow sales, I'd love to know what to go out and find. So drop it into the comments below. The first item that I've got for you today is an item that I actually picked up on Tuesday. It was sort of the, the theme of the video on Tuesday, and it was the furniture pickup of the hall table. Well, I ended up picking this one for $50, and uh, it was a pretty good get. I, I showed it off in the video. It was in great condition. I really didn't do anything to it. I just literally brought it back into the House, took some photos and then whacked it up onto eBay and uh, it did sell uh, within the space of just four days. Like all furniture, it generally goes pretty quick for me. Um, the standard price point guys for myself, $150. So I've made myself $100. Uh, I went and delivered this one. Again, I only do deliveries locally around my around my area that's no more than about 20 minutes worth of a turnaround. And uh, that was the case with this one here. Literally actually in the place that I picked it up is the same place that I dropped it back off four days later for $100 profit. So when you're looking at the time that I invested into this hundred dollars it would have been about 30 minutes and that would have been the commute to pick it up and drop it off so it's been an unbelievable flip it's something that i'm going to focus on a whole lot more especially when the sales are quite slow like they have been on ebay jumping into facebook marketplace diving back into my furniture could be a really great way to uh, continue to have consistency with my sales i'm going to stick with the theme of last tuesday's video and guys if you haven't checked out that video go and go and find it because uh, I'll, I'll link it here to make it easy for you but there were a few sales that have come through already from that tuesday a, uh, video. So this was the other one. It was the ASICS uh, 2130 uh, Women's, I believe, uh, from memory, uh, running shoes. Now, these weren't in the best of condition and they were an incredibly old pair of running shoes. But for $8, the ASICS brand, they always hold up and they generally go on to sell pretty well. So I bought it. It sold for $39.99, guys. And um, I was actually pretty happy with this. It was my full asking price. I wasn't after too much for this one. And to be honest with you, I really just wanted to try and get a quick flip out of it. Um, didn't really even clean these shoes. Just took some photos, listed it up and uh, and hope for the best. And um, when you take it all out, fees and postage, I've profited $18.68, which isn't a whole heap of money. Certainly not what I average for a pair of shoes, but it was the four day sales cycle. And it just highlights that even a pair of dirty old shoes and a thrift can still go on to sell for 40 bucks on eBay. Now I've been thinking more and more over the last few weeks about my books. I've got a lot of books, they are just here to my left and uh, I'm thinking about just almost getting rid of them and jumping out of the book game. Not because they aren't selling, I still think that books are a great category, but they don't excite me. They're not really, there's no real thrill in selling books. So I may look to slowly just get rid of the books that I've got here and, and stop doing that from now on. But this one was a good sale that did come through. This was the Lee Child Jack Reacher series. Now this was one bundle out of a second bundle that had already gone on to sell for some good money. Uh, it was the leftover books that I had and uh, all in all, I actually bought 25 of these books for $50 at $2 a piece. And the first set went on to sell for $120. In the end, this second set has sold for $85. And I believe there were 13 books in total in this bundle. So you've got an $85 sale price. I paid roughly $25 for the, for the books. Uh, the postage was $18 to ship it off. And the fees at 15% was $12.75. So I profited $42 on this second set but the first set actually went on to make me $75. So all in all guys, Jack Reacher, this series um, of uh, Lee Child has actually gone on to make me about $120 in total. It did take 81 days for both bundles to go on to sell, but I really do think this is a great author. If you can find a few of them out there and bundle them up, you'll generally go on to make some good money because they are a sought after book. 
Still had a few international sales that have come through. I'm generally getting my international sales on a weekly basis now, so things are looking pretty good in that space. Um, I'm just putting every single one of my listings up for a $30 postage rate, unless it's a really heavy item. Say for instance, a book bundle, that's gonna be well over two kilos, and then it's gonna be far too expensive for me to try and ship it anywhere. So anything that's anything under two kilos, basically, I'm putting up for about 30 bucks worth of international postage. So these were one of them that did sell internationally. I believe they are off to the United States. Uh, it was a pair of um, camouflage Nike shorts, uh, just casual shorts really. Um, paid five dollars for these. You, you often see these ones in the op shop and uh, I'm always grabbing them when I do. Just 100% cotton, really good condition. The Nike brand, the big tick on the leg. Um, sold for $50 in total, so $30 worth of postage, $20 for the item. It's gonna cost me $18 to send this one off and uh, the fees are gonna be $7.50. So guys, $19.50 in a 44 day turnaround for a pair of shorts found in the thrift for $5. That's an incredible markup and I'm very happy to get the result and it's all due to the fact that obviously it sold with international postage and as you can see I've been able to make an extra $12 there. I had a comment during the week that I did want to touch on as well around me saying that I'm blatantly paying or, or charging people more for international postage and I don't believe that to be the case. That $18 charge is actually a $24 charge to get that sent off to the United States and the extra five or six dollars I would account to a postage and handling fee. It allows me to sell internationally and I don't believe from when the buyer receives the item that they'll feel like they're out of pocket. Good. There's been a few pairs of shoes that have still sold for me this week, guys. I wanted to put this one in here because it's beaten the odds. It's beaten the averages. It's the Vans Hot Pink Canvas Shoes. Now, I do sell quite a few uh, pairs of Vans. It is a pretty common item for me. You'll often see these in the thrift. And I definitely still think while they are quite a common item, they do still go on to sell. 21 days was the sales cycle for these Hot uh, hot Pink Vans Shoes. Um, my average sale price for a pair of Vans is always $40 free postage. I would never buy a pair of Vans for anything more than $5 because the average sale price is a little bit less than a standard pair of say running shoes. So $5 purchase, these are sold for $45, so slightly higher than my average van shoe sale price. Uh, the postage $7.32, the fee $6.75. I've profited $25.93 off these vans. And like I said, it was a 21 day turnaround. So you can expect a slightly longer sales cycle, I feel like with the van's shoes. Mine generally take a little bit longer to sell. Um, to get these done in three weeks and to sell them for 45 bucks for a pair of vans, I think it's beaten the averages. Here's a brand that I've spoken about a little bit in my trip to the thrift videos. It was the Nina Pasadena Chino Pants. Now these were brand new with tags for $159.99 and I always try for a really high end price point when I list these up because they are brand new, they are with tag. You think you would get the top end dollar for it. I listed these up for 120 bucks and they were in excellent condition. There was no stains on them or anything like that. Uh, they ended up selling after 150 days of me doing the end relist strategy about three or four times, slowly dropping the price point every single time uh, down to an $89 sale price. So I've ended up profiting $58.33. I can't complain about that. And I don't regret listing them for $122 because you've got to take your shot. You've got to give it your best, especially when you've got a brand new with tags type of an item. And if it doesn't sell, take the loss, take the profit, $58.33. I still thought that was a pretty good result. Look out for Nina Pasadena. Definitely goes on a sell. I've sold a number of the brand and uh, I'll continue to source it when I see it in the thrift. And a quick update now on my DVDs. Obviously, I've, I speak about this every single week. I bought the DVDs for $300. $50. Uh, I've got an update for you now, 27 days after the initial purchase. So I've been able to sell 47 of those DVDs now. So um, still sort of ticking just under two sales every single day. The total sales volume for these DVDs has been $660.23. The postage has worked out to be $230, selling them for $4.50. I will quickly show you because I get it, I get asked this question all the time in the comments, so I really just want to nail it right here. This is how I send the DVDs. Those guys right there. Now I buy them in bulk. I buy packets of a hundred, and they cost me four dollars and fifty cents when you work it out on average. So that's how I'm doing it. Um, every single DVD just goes straight in. There's no bubble wrap or anything like that. And I've done hundreds of DVDs, and I've never had negative feedback around the postage or damage or anything like that. So. That hopefully answers that question for anyone thinking about how I'm doing it for $4.50. Uh, the fees work out to be $99 at 15%. And my profit or what's left over, I'm $19 behind. So I'm two or three DVDs. Once I hit 50, three more sales, I'll probably be in the profit for the very first time. And it's only taken me one month to get into the profit. Now, I've still got 100 of these DVDs listed up onto eBay. So there's still gonna be profit on those 100. Probably it's gonna be something a bit, anywhere between sort of, I'm gonna guesstimate about $750 in profit. Um, sales cycle there of 26 days. And I've also got 
another 200 DVDs that I'm gonna wholesale back on the Facebook Marketplace for hopefully another $250 to make it a $1,000 turnaround. So uh, a big winner here. That's certainly a positive, I guess, for, for what I'm up to. I will quickly mention as well the, um, the, the jumpers, the, the other wholesale purchase that I made around the same time as these. Uh, one very, very kind viewer who watched my wholesale update where I gave the, the negative, uh, I guess, to the uh, to the wholesale purchase that I made in the jumpers, she bought one. And uh, that is the only sale that I've had made. So thank you very much to that person out there that did buy that item. Um, I've still only had one of those uh, 140 jumpers sell. So um, yeah, really disappointing, but um, it is what it is. Luckily, these DVDs are going all right. But uh, as much as I want to document the good, I also want to document bad and uh, those jumpers have been horrific. So there you go guys, they were seven items that I thought I'd put in today's video. Like I said, it has been such a slow week. Uh, let me know, is it the same for you? Is the month of June, I'm 15% down for the month of June and is that simply for the fact that it is sort of pre-tax? That's what I'm kind of thinking, um, at least I'm hoping anyway. The last few months have been really steady, really consistent every single week and this month I've just seen it go up and down and then back up. Last month, uh, last week it was $2,400 and then this week, as you'll see in a second, it's absolutely plummeted again. So. Let's pull the table up and I'll give you a look at my numbers for this week. Um, as you can see, a little bit disappointing guys, 33 sales and uh, I'm probably averaging about 50. Last week I did 61, so a very, very large discrepancy in what was just a seven day turnaround. Uh, the total revenue guys, I'm not even at $1,000 and uh, I'm normally doing about $2,000 a week. So that is literally about half what I'm normally doing. Uh, the fees of 112, the postage cost of 204. I spent $257.50 on, uh, on new inventory this week with a couple of trips uh, to the thrift and uh, a net cash flow position there, $371.70. So, wowee guys, to think that I've worked a full time, uh, you know, 40 hour work week, I did take yesterday off, which was really nice, but to be honest guys, a 40 hour work week to return $371.70, my goodness. That actually is a bit of a kick in the guts, but um, look, I, know, I, know, I do know that it's just the nature of sales and it's the way things go. Like I, if I pull the table up and I'll show you what it was last week, there, there it is, $1,400 in cash flow and, and I was away in Byron Bay for three days and I worked a four day work week. So unbelievable the way things can fluctuate as much as they do, but you can't really get too down in the down weeks and you can't really get too high when the things are going really well. So I think I'm gonna actually just dabble in um, running a store promotion doing a 10% off my entire store even, or picking a few items out and doing a bit of a discount. I'm, I'm gonna give that a bit of a go for the very first time. I think if I was ever gonna do a store promotion, uh, now would be a very good few days to be running one. So I'm gonna jump into it, learn how to do it, activate it, and um, and hopefully pull in a few sales to, to round out the month and, and just pick up my revenue uh, a little bit for what has been a pretty slow month, 15% down. Uh, let me know in the comments, uh, what would you do if you've seen a dip in your sales? What's the first place you go to and, and what do you do? Do you put more listings in? Do you, uh, do you manipulate your listings and, and take better photos? Um, you know, what do you do? Do you run a store promotion? That's what I'm thinking you're doing. Uh, let me know. Let's get the conversation started. I'm going to reply to every single comment uh, in the comments, uh, like I always do with every video, but um, drop it in there. Let's have a bit of a chat about it. Um, pick up hopefully in July, but um, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I'm going to leave it right there. And um, yeah, I look forward to catching you in the next video, which will be on Tuesday, another daily vlog. Thanks very much for being here, guys. We'll see you in the next. Oh, 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 oh,